Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about the standard error of beta hat and, and why it's important. And we're actually going to start deriving the standard error of beta hat from sort of first principles. Um, but first of all, we need to talk about why it's important. So let's say I have some sort of relationship um, or I'm interested in finding out the relationship between test scores and classroom size. And I put this into some sort of statistical program and I get that test scores is equal to 50 minus 10 times the classroom size, where I've sort of used least squares estimators to get this sort of 50 and the minus 10. Well, on sort of first look, this looks to make some sort of sense. And um, if we say that sort of class size was, for example, a dummy variable where it's equal to one, if the classroom size is bigger than 30 and zero otherwise, then it's sort of minus 10 here makes some sense because it says that if a classroom size is bigger than 30, then on average, uh, the test scores tend to be 10 units lower than they would be if the classroom size was less than 30. So that kind of makes some sense. But the trouble is, because these are just point estimates, this 50 and this sort of minus 10 here, we don't know whether these are the product of taking some particularly unusual sample. So another way of saying that is sampling error or whether they're due to there actually being some true relationship between classroom size and test score. So let's think about this. So if I had some sort of estimator which was, um, let's say, unbiased, and the actual true population uh, parameter was zero, um, so it might look something like this. So it's a very, very wide estimator, uh, so, which has got a very sort of wide sampling variance. So from this particular estimator, it is quite likely that we might have got a result of minus 10, even though the true population parameter was in fact zero. So it might actually be that there's no relationship between test score and classroom size. And this sort of minus 10 here is still relatively likely because of the fact that we've got a sort of high variance of estimation. We've got a high sampling error of our estimator. And that's represented by this sort of wide distribution of our um, sampling error of beta hat here. So contrast this with a circumstance whereby we've got an estimator which is very, very efficient and it's unbiased as well. So uh, it would, in fact, be look something like that. Um, then it would have been much, much less likely in this second or for the second estimator to get a value of minus 10 if it was actually the case that the true population parameter was centered around, well, the true population parameter was zero meaning that its sampling distribution was centered around zero. So in this second, uh, or for the second estimator, because it's got such a low sampling variance, we might actually be able to conclude that the effect of classroom size on test scores is statistically different from zero. Whereas in the second regression, or the, sorry, the first regression whereby we had a much wider sampling variance, we wouldn't have been able to make that assumption because of the fact that it was quite likely that we would have got this value of minus 10 by chance. Okay, so that's why it's so important to know what the standard error of our particular OLS estimators is, because it allows us to make some sort of uh, conclusion about what the processes going on in our population actually are. Uh, in this case, it would allow us, if we had a sort of more efficient estimator, it might allow us to make some conclusion about the effect of classroom size on test scores. Okay, so how do we go about deriving uh, the standard error of beta hat? So we remember from last time that we found that beta hat was equal to beta p plus the sum of xi minus x bar times ui, all divided by ssx squared, when this sum is something from i equals 1 to n. And we're interested in finding the variance of beta hat. So what we can do is we can take the variance of both sides and we say that the variance of beta hat given xi is equal to, well, the sort of variance of this first term, beta p, is zero. And also the covariance between this first term and the second term is also equal to zero. The intuition here is that beta p is itself just a sort of constant, it's a number, it doesn't vary, or nor does it covary with anything. So the variance operator just passes straight through that and it becomes zero. So we're left with the variance of beta hat given xi is equal to the variance of this whole sort of stuff on the right hand side, which is the sum of i equals one to n of xi minus x bar times ui, all divided by sxx. Okay, so 
And this is when we need to introduce our um, concept of no serial correlation. In general, when I take the variance of uh, the sum of two random variables, so the variance of x1, for example, plus the variance of um, x2, then that is in general equal to the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2 plus two times the covariance of x1 with x2. And notice that this sort of sum here, this, this sum term here, actually contains in it sort of u1 plus u2 plus, you know, that sort of thing. Although it's sort of going to be multiplied by xi, it's going to have that sort of thing in it. And if there is some sort of covariance between our errors, our u1, u2, um, arbitrarily up to un, um, then the, we're going to get these sort of covariance terms. But because we're so, assuming that there's no serial correlation of errors, then this actually just becomes the sum of i equals 1 to n of uh, the variance of xi minus x bar, um, all times ui, divided by Sxx squared. And the reason I've got the squared there is because, in general, the variance operator, it's, it's not a linear operator, it's sort of a quadratic operator. If I have some sort of um, variable, random variable x, and I'm trying to find the variance of some constant a times that random variable x, well, that's equal to a squared times the variance of x. And notice that this sort of SSX on the bottom only contains X terms, which um, are either um, non-stochastic or they're sort of fixed and repeated samples, um, which means that this is just essentially a number on the bottom here. OK, so we've got to this sort of stage in deriving our variance of our least squares estimator beta hat. In the next video, we are going to use the assumption of heteroscedasticity to actually derive completely the um, usual form of the variance of our least squared estimator beta hat. I'll see you then.